Uh, this is a special moment. This is Passion Week. And at Passion Week, it's important for us to really reflect on what Jesus did. And, and tonight is a special night. We call it Holy Thursday now, but I'm not even sure that that really connects with it. I like what they traditionally have called it for a few hundred years now, Maundy Thursday. Now, Maundy Thursday is kind of a weird term, and you're like, what? So that's why we don't like to use weird terms. But this one's a good one because really it comes from the, the term that means a mandate. And Jesus, when he shared his last supper, he left his disciples with a mandate. He says, hey, I'm about to go. See, he knew fully what was going on. I mean, that just blows me away. That's why I love this night so well, Pastor Byron, because Jesus knew exactly what was going on. His disciples thought it was an ordinary meal. They're like, hey, we get to hang out with Jesus another night. That's cool with us, you know. He's, you know, serving us a meal. I love to eat. Um, but Jesus knew this was his last time. Jesus knew this, and the disciples did not. There was, it was just another dinner for them, like Pastor Kyle said. There might even have been some confusion about what yeah, was going on. For sure. Uh, but for Jesus, there was no confusion. Right on. None whatsoever. Uh, they were celebrating a Passover meal. Right. Uh, but they had no idea just what Passover celebration that was about to begin. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's something that had been celebrated, and they're like, hey, we're good religious folk, and so we're going to celebrate what they've been celebrating, what God had instituted for hundreds of years before that. Yeah. And that's what the Passover was, so it was still a meaningful night on that night, but they had no idea, as Jesus went in, as it talks about in John 13, that Jesus went in, and the first part of this whole thing was him washing the disciples' feet. Yeah. I mean, he kind of set the stage right there. He says, hey, guys, we're all sitting around a, a meal together, yeah. and none of you chumps are doing this. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And in his whole ministry, he had been modeling to them that yeah. in order to be a leader, you need to be a servant leader. Yeah. But they continued to miss the mark and not get the point. And so he opens up here with modeling servant behavior, and he goes to wash the feet, and they say, no, no, no. Not, no, you shall never wash my feet, Lord. And he says, if you don't let me wash you, you can have no part in me. Wow. And so he models right there exactly what it means to be a follower and a leader in the church of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. That was so good. And to think, to think, I mean, it just always, always affects me so deeply in my soul to think that he washed Judas' feet. Yeah. yeah. That night, I mean, he didn't stop and go, um, I think I'm going to pass by you, bro. He washed his feet. He got down there and, and he says, you know what? It doesn't matter that I know in just a few short hours, you're going to turn me in. You're going to stab me in the back, but I'm going to show you. As it says, I, I love it, you know, as it says in, in John 13, show you the full extent of my love. Full extent. Wow. Yeah, that he would even die for his enemies. I mean, the people, not only did he want to wash the feet of the people that he loved, yeah. And the people, but also the people that had wronged him yeah. and were going to wrong yeah. him. Regardless, he continued to love and show and model what it means to be a servant leader. And that's Jesus Christ loving all. Yeah. And in that love, that's not a fluffy kind of weak sauce love. Mm. A lot of times we think, oh, this love, it just backs down to everything. Yes, he surrendered himself to all, but he still held them to a high standard. He knew what, you know, and he called Judas out and said, hey, you're going to do this to the one that I passed the bread to, you know. Right. And so he did point this out, acknowledging that he knew what was going on. But also he said to Peter, the one who said, well, don't wash my feet, <laughs> right. you know, and he says, wash all of me then yeah. if I need to be part. He says, no, 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 I just need to wash one part. Yeah. But at the same time, you're going to deny me. Yeah. I mean, he called him out, you know, he says, hey, you know, I love you. I will surrender myself to you but we can do better, you know? And that's what this mandate is all about. Yeah. And this mandate comes about further on in the journey when he commands his disciples. He says, a new commandment I have for you, a new mandate. Yeah. This is what it's all about. This is why it's called Maundy Thursday. A new mandate commandment that I have for you is to love one another yeah. as I have loved you. Yeah, huh. yeah. and he modeled that perfectly there. Um, and how we need to understand that the love that he's given us, Amen. we need to extend to others. Right. And that all began, well, well before then, but he models the beginning of that on that night. Yeah, for sure. And so I love the fact that in confusion or in the ordinary, Jesus does something powerful and wonderful. Wow. You know, for those disciples, they didn't even realize. I think even tonight, I would challenge us tonight as we share in this moment together, 
um, that, that we know, wow, this is a different kind of setting. You know, we're, we're watching it online. Sometimes, you know, I, I was blessed that right before we came in here, I got a text, Pastor Byron. I got a text of someone saying, I am feeling more connected with my church family wow. than ever wow. right now, you know? Wow. And, and, and so they called it out. And so I'm like, praise God that yeah. God's able to extend beyond this. But we acknowledge that for some, it's a distance. It's a barrier. Yes. And we can acknowledge that, well, I mean, I, I, I wish it could go back to normal. I wish yeah. the other things. Yeah. I wish something else. But, but God says, in the midst of right now, yeah. I'm doing something. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, and also, also when I think about, as we begin to talk about, um, not only the Last Supper, but the Lord's Supper that's Amen. instituted that night, about how at times that can feel so distant and so, mm -hmm. so long ago, um, how we're not really there, um, but yet we are really there. Yes, and I think are. that the way that we're doing church right now is an example of that. Right. That we're, you think, okay, we're not really in your living room. You're not really in the worship center with us. But yes, we are. Wow. We really are together. And in the same way, when we take communion, we really are with the Lord at the beginning mm -hmm. uh, when he instituted the Last yeah, Supper. Yeah, I, I think about that because you're right. You're right. To, space does not matter to God. No. Nope. It matters to us. <laughs> yeah. And we'd be like, oh, man, so-and-so so far away, and I miss him so much and yeah. stuff, which we do miss our church family. That's a fact. We miss every single one of you. Um, but... In the midst of that, God doesn't know that expanse of space. He's overall, he's in all. Yeah. And in that, you know, that he says, where two or three are gathered. And I know that there's more of us in that space right now. Yeah. And so I know that he's filling all of this space, that he's sharing. It's just like that, that table that was there at that moment. Right. I could just see Jesus just settling in with us. Yeah. You know, and the power of the Holy Spirit just descending on us, you know, because that's what he calls us to. He says, hey, I'm going to not just call you to a new mandate. I'm going to empower you to live that out. Yeah, absolutely. And I would want to touch back also where he said, where two or three gather, I am with you. If you're in your home and you're by yourself right now and you're yes. thinking there's not two or three here. Yes, there are. Amen. The, the whole church is with you right, right now on. tonight uh, in communion, about to receive communion. Uh, and so you are not alone. Um, and I had another thought, and I totally forgot it. That's all right, man. I love it. That's the beauty of these live events. Because you know? now you get to know the real deal, that we go brain dead all yeah. the time. Yeah, I kind of operate that way most of the time. Uh, but it is good stuff. Yeah, we don't script these things out. I want this just to be a more of a, yeah. of a real, just a conversational yeah. time. And I hope you're engaging in that way in a conversational type atmosphere. Because, yeah, like God says, I am with you and and I'm a firm believer. When God is in, present in a place, yeah. things change. Absolutely. Things change. And that's why communion is so important. Communion is not just something, and that's why we wanted to do this special thing to together. We wanted to do this special thing with our church family because, honestly, I miss the communion uh, opportunities that we have as a church family while we're being distant. And so I thought, what a better time to initiate a digital online experience of communion yeah. than on Maundy Thursday. You know, and because when he says, I am here, I'm empowering you, I am giving you that new mandate to love mm -hmm. each other as I have loved you, yeah. I am with you. Yeah. That he has invited us to the table. And some of you, I mean, we might be the Peters. Mm -hmm. We might be the Judases. We might have been, yeah. man, my life has not been reflecting Christ this week. But you know what? This is the beauty of the Passion Week. The beauty of the Passion Week is not about perfection of his people, right. but about him perfecting his people. That's right, absolutely. And accepting that we are not perfect, but yet welcoming us all the while into fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see that where he, he shared the table, like Kyle talked about, with Judas Iscariot, who was going to betray him. Yeah. Not only did he wash his feet and serve him, but he offered him the fellowship mm -hmm. Uh, that was there for him. Right. And, and he honestly, he probably still could have even accepted it. But of course, he was set in his ways and he was going to continue to reject God. But Jesus loved him and continued to pursue him anyway. And he does that with all of us. <laughs> all of us that love him, uh, all of us that are far from him, he wants to be in relationship with us. Right. And, and what he's offering us at the table is to come to the table, come as you are, Confess uh, you, what you know you've done wrong and receive the love and the blessing that I have for you yeah. uh, with this command. Amen, yeah. amen. Yeah, and, and I, I like that right there because it also does call us in Corinthians. It says, yeah. do not 
partake of this lightly. You know, that we can't just go, well, I got my juice, I got my cracker, I'm just going to pound it, move on, like something mystical and magical yeah. is going to happen. Yeah. That's not what it's about. It's about us surrendering and submitting ourselves to Him right. the way He surrendered and submit himself to the cross and, yeah. and to everything that he faced for us right. so that he could redeem us, that we've got to take on that, that redemption yeah. that he's offered. Right. And so I want to extend that to us tonight. I want us to think about this. You know, am I where I need to be with Christ? If you're not where you need to be with Christ, this, I'm super, super glad that you have tuned in, that you have tuned in tonight to share in this because Jesus is not turning you away and say, hey, you need to get your act together, yeah. son. You know, he's saying, this is where you need to be. Right. This is right where you need to be. And I want you to receive the fullness of what I'm doing for you. And so I just want you to take a moment. It doesn't have to be some weird little thing or, you know, I got to go and do this. But just in your heart, in your mind, even in your space right now to just say, Jesus, mm -hmm. forgive me. Jesus, forgive me for my the weird thoughts I've been having for the little bit of frustration and angst that I've been displaying and not that peace and that hope um, that I'm supposed to, but I choose to receive your grace again, fresh, new tonight, because that's what it is. And it's, uh, communion is an extension of his grace. It's truly his grace that's poured out for us. Amen. And so in that confession moment, like Pastor Kyle said, we can't come to the table and take it lightly. And you can't take your, that confession lightly either. Like, right, yeah, I know I did wrong. No, this is a heartfelt sorrow. And recognizing that, that you have lived in the wrong way, mm. uh, but Jesus is calling you to a better way. Amen. He's not pushing you away Amen. because of the wrong, right. but he's drawing you to what is right. <laughs> and so you need to, in 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 earnest, confess the sin and turn from it, whatever it is in that life, and receive the grace that Jesus has to offer you. Right on, excellent. Well, let's just take a moment and let's go towards that. If you have not prepared your communion elements, I would encourage you right now, find that time and go grab uh, your juice and the, and the bread element so that we can partake in that together because I think it's gonna be a beautiful moment for all of us as family to share this. Whether or not you're sitting around the table with your family right now, you might be sitting around your nuclear, your physical earthly family. And I think that is a beautiful expression of what God is doing. But as Pastor Byron said, if you're sitting alone, know that you are with us, Absolutely. that we are so grateful that you are here, that you are sister, you are brother, you are friend in this, you are companion in this journey um, with Christ together. In the same way that all of those misfits, so to speak. I mean, because they, they were not the standard ordinary guys. Many of them were Galileans, yeah. uh, but they were of different ilk than, than others, you know, than even one another. You probably wouldn't have put them in the same room together, but they belong together. And in the same way, you belong. You belong here at the table. You belong here with us. And so I hope that you have your communion elements because we're just gonna take a moment. Um, and I'm just gonna pray for a second and then we're gonna share this communion together. So let's join together. If, if you're at your home right now and you're with others that are surrounding you in this space, then I would just ask you, you know, because you are in that sp safe space together. That's just who you are, that's just what's going on. I'm asking you to grip it up with each other. You know, let's just grip it up with each other as we take this moment and pray. Let's pray. God, tonight we come before you humbly, knowing that we don't deserve to be at this table, but you've invited us here. We might not even understand the fullness of what it means, but neither did the disciples. God, tonight, we want to accept your grace. We want to be moved again by the power of your spirit. We want to be moved and empowered to love others the way you have loved us. God, I pray that tonight that we will not feel isolated and alone. We will feel unified with the whole of the body because it's not just our church family that's celebrating. God, I thank you that it is your family throughout the world tonight that is celebrating in different ways on this holy Thursday, this Maundy Thursday, that you've given us this mandate. You've given us this hope. 
God, I pray that truly our hearts will be open before you, that you will cleanse what needs cleansing, that you will purify our hearts from all unrighteousness, as your word says, when we confess and we come before you vulnerably and authentically. So God, that is who we are. Knowing we didn't come to this place because we've earned this honor, but we've come to this place because you've invited us in. So tonight, Lord, fill us afresh and anew once more. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. They didn't understand at all. We don't fully understand, but he said, this is my body. They would know full well in just a day's time what that would mean. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you eat of this, remember me. Let's eat the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant. That new covenant is that new mandate, and it's not a heavy mandate. It's just love one another. Love everyone the way I have loved you. And he says, this is the cup of that redemption. This is that cup of grace. This is that cup that just truly extends and receives forgiveness. And so he said, whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. Let's drink together. I'm going to ask Pastor Byron to pray for us as we kind of close this holy moment. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifices you've made for us. Yes, God. The willingness that you've had to reach to us. Mm. That though you were in heaven, you were willing to come to earth and humble yourself. Yes. Humble yourself to be a servant Mm. for the people. The people that you came for to love. And Father, you loved us so much that you were willing to walk the passion path to death, even death on a cross. And before you left, Lord God, you said, this I'm giving to you, this I command you, Mm -hmm. to take this bread and this cup and do it in remembrance of me. Yes. And to know that I am present with you always. Lord, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to come together. Mm-hmm. We know that this pandemic has not separated the church, Hallelujah. Lord God. Thank you, But God. in many ways, it's bringing us stronger together. Right. Thank you, God. Lord, it doesn't matter the controversy. You are always above it. Yes. You are always in it, and you are always with us. Mm-hmm. We thank you for your presence here tonight through these elements, Lord God. I pray we all receive your grace. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for being with us tonight on this Maundy Thursday. Receive that commissioning. Receive that mandate in your own life and live it out as you love one another. This is just actually the beginning of the beauty of the Passion Week. Tomorrow, we're going to be sharing together with all the churches in the Thomas, where they have a collaborative Good Friday service, and it's either at noon or it's at 6 p.m., and it's going to be on our website, um, all the churches' websites around the, this community. And so we thank you for that. Um, I just want to say a special thanks to the Point Church, our partner church that we are in this together with. So you Point people, we love you. Thank you for being a part with this. Uh, and then Thursday, I mean Saturday, we got a good event going on as well. Mm-hmm. Just um, bring out the family, to connect or whatever. Um, but also Sunday. Sunday, Easter is coming. Uh, We're going to get together at a drive-in service, 1030 on Sunday morning. If that's still not your thing, if you're not feeling comfortable to come out and to share that time with us, that is okay. We're still going to be live streaming that. We've been uh, working that out to even on a different location on the Fry's parking lot. We're going to be live streaming that so you can do that. But I do want you to know as well that we have received, I mean, there are some concerns. I know that this is a very difficult, intense time. But we have gone through the channels. We've gotten permission to do this. 
um, from the Sacramento, Sacramento County Public Health Department. Um, and so just know that, that, that we've told them that people are going to come, they're going to remain in their cars, they're going to hear very well through our radio transmitter that we've got there that's going to be brought in. But we're going to be able to share that time, look across through the windows at our church family once again coming together. It's going to be a beautiful time to celebrate Easter in this way. But once again, God bless you. Have an incredible Holy Thursday. And we celebrate this time and this Passion Week with you. God bless you. Have a good evening.